infamous serial killers, Leonard Lake and Charles Zane, kidnapped, raped, tortured, and murdered women and made a lot of videos of them doing it. This is a found footage film purported to be newly released footage of several of the murders. The film's called The Miranda Murders because the real-life Leonard Lake called their plot Project Miranda after a character in a novel that he was obsessed with. The plot's very simple. Lake and Inc. collect a victim, torment them, rape them, and finally murder them. Rinse and repeat. They're trying to create a perfect, pliable sex slave that they can use, abuse, and throw away when bored. Each new victim shows them evolving their... techniques. Occasionally, friends or family of victims are murdered too. Most, or all of this, is actually heavily based on the real-life Leonard Lake and Charles Ng murders. You can easily compare this to Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. Both are dramatizations of real-life serial killers that had realism as their main concern. Though this is obviously much less polished than Henry, it is one of the best serial killer films ever made. This film isn't entirely rape and murder, though. Leonard Lake, like the real-life guy, is prone to self-aggrandizing on camera, talking about his plans and techniques in as much detail as he can, dominating the weaker Ing like a bullying soap opera husband. I'm not ready to forgive you yet. Most of the film sort of hovers in the space between boredom and vaguely skin-crawling. The film opens with documentary footage from the real-life case, which sets the tone brilliantly, but might have been a bit of an own goal, because it makes it harder to accept the dramatizations that follow as real. Obviously, it's not real, but for the horror of this kind of filmmaking to work, you really need to suspend your disbelief, and that makes it harder. But they did manage to avoid the pitfalls of found footage films, mostly. Those pitfalls like, why are they recording this? A lesser film would have come up with reasons for them to have the camera running when Lake was finally arrested and committed suicide, or when Charles Ng tried to escape to Canada. But they didn't. Some important parts of the narrative are even told through intertitles because there's no reason for the cameras to be involved. But, like I said, it's still only mostly. Because every so often you do get a scene that takes you out of it. Like when Lake's girlfriend explains why she's leaving him to a camera for no reason. Or some brief parts where victims attempt to escape. I have to say, the acting is good pretty much across the board. Matt Rossfully and Guil Clavera are really good as Lake and Ng. Their natural chemistry together coming from their shared YouTube shows, including Haunted Roots, where they visit allegedly haunted locations throughout California. The other actors are fine, though most of them aren't on screen enough to really leave a massive impression. The footage is meant to be VHS, and it's fine, though it looks like it was filmed in digital and then masked with in post to get the VHS look. Which makes sense, it is not an expensive film. As a period piece, it's far from perfect. The budget couldn't stretch to much real 1980s props and decor, so wisely they limited much of the action to fairly nondescript rooms. And those rooms are usually a fairly good match for the actual room seen in the real Lakening videos. I am wondering whether they didn't choose to blur out the face of the woman playing the victims. The other common problems with found footage is why or how is this being released? Blurring the faces would give the victims more privacy and make it feel more like real footage edited for distribution. But they could have been going for a deep web thing, I suppose. It goes without saying that this film is not for everyone. It's not even the sort of thing I'd watch for fun. If serial killer history interests you or dark and humorless low-budget cinema, then you may well enjoy... well, enjoy isn't the right word. You might find this interesting. Personally, I'm going to keep an eye on the guys behind it. They could have great things ahead of them.